everybody, St. Patrick's Day is around the corner, so you know what we gotta make? Corned beef and cabbage. I was introduced to this delicious dish when I was really little, but when you go to the store and get the prepackaged corned beef and cabbage, sometimes there can be lots of chemicals inside. So, we're making a homemade, chemical-free corned beef and cabbage today. Here are the ingredients. So we're gonna start off by making our brine. It's super simple, just add all your ingredients into the pot. So first we're gonna add in some water, and then we're gonna add sugar and salt. And the reason why we heat it up, just so that the sugar and salt dissolves, and that way it doesn't just sit at the bottom of your marinating bag. We've got some thyme, allspice, cinnamon, cloves, ground ginger, black peppercorns, this thing I forgot, what is it? Mustard seeds, bay leaves, and coriander seeds. Now what you wanna do is turn it on to medium heat and just keep stirring until the sugar and salt is dissolved. Now we're just gonna let it sit in the fridge to cool off completely. As you can see, there is a lot of fat on this brisket, so now we're just gonna trim some of it off while the brine is cooling. So now we're just gonna go grab our brine and put it in a bag. This is a two gallon bag, so just make sure you have a two gallon bag because otherwise the brisket and brine won't fit in the bag. We wanna make sure that the brisket is totally submerged, so like that. And also, we put it in this little baking dish just so that if there is a leak, we can catch the spill. So now we're just gonna set it in the fridge for seven days, flipping it over each day. It's time. What we're gonna do is take our beautiful beef out of the bag and just rinse it off. Here I have a giant pot and what I'm gonna do is place our corned beef inside and fill it up with water till it's two inches above the meat. We're gonna chop up our celery, carrots, and onion very roughly and we're just gonna add this to the pot with the beef. Now we're just gonna bring it to a boil and once it's boiling, turn it on low and let it simmer for three to four hours until the meat is fork tender. So when you put a fork through, it should just go whoosh. While the beef is cooking away, we're gonna make the cabbage part of the corned beef and cabbage. So here we have a head of green cabbage. Now, actually, we like adding onion to our cabbage because it adds more flavor. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give our cabbage a head start by cooking it in the beef broth, and then we'll saute it with the onions to get all that flavor, caramelization. It's gonna be so good. We just wanna make sure that it still stays intact at the bottom so we don't have to fish out all those tiny little pieces of cabbage. It is very tender, so this is a perfect time to put our cabbage in. I'm just pushing our cabbage down so we can make sure every bit gets all the flavor soaked up. Then the lid goes back on and we cook this for 15 minutes. All right, time to cut up the onions. We're gonna add some butter into a pan and then saute our onions in there until they're nice and golden. Look at this little heart-shaped onion, it's so cute. Oh yeah, the cabbage is cooked a little bit. And you can see now why we kept the roots intact is because it makes it so much easier to fish the cabbage out. The beef is so tender, it's already falling apart. Always oh, good. One thing you'll notice from our beef than the beef at the store is that we don't have that pink color, and that's because we don't use pink salt or any artificial colors, but trust me, it's just as good. So now let's just put some foil on it and let it rest. I'm just gonna cut this into slices. So at the last part, there is a little bit of a core, so I'm just gonna cut that off. I've let it drain too, so it's not, there's not a ton of liquid anymore. Let's saute our cabbage until it's nice and caramelized. Let's add some salt and pepper to taste. Ta-da! There is the star of the show. We've got this beautiful beef that we need to cut up and eat because I can't stand it anymore. So the lines go down like this. That's called the grain. So we're gonna cut against the grain. That just makes it a whole lot easier to eat. It's just falling apart. That's how tender it is. 
To keep it nice and moist, we're gonna pour some broth that we cooked it in over top. Look at this. It looks so beautiful. The whole meal finally came together. We're pairing this with just some roasted carrots. We plated it up so it looks really pretty, and of course, I had to get Lexi to come taste. <laughs> <laughs> So tender. I'm gonna get a little bit of onion, cabbage, and beef. The contrast and the combination of that buttery, sweet, caramelized cabbage and onions, and then this really earthy, just super deep, flavorful beef with all those spices is just packed into every inch, makes this dish absolutely mouthwatering and amazing. This is a perfect dish for St. Patrick's Day, which is coming around the corner, so if you give it a try, let us know what you think, because we would love to hear if you absolutely fell in love just like we did, because it's really good. How could you not? <laughs> How could you not fall in love? Uh -huh. Lexi's over here just finishing off the plate. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye! Bye.